My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. My husband shouted these words in front of the entire family. What a despicable man trying to corner me mentally even at a time like this. As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up from their seats. Then everyone bowed to me and silently left the room. W why A certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. My name is Sarah, a 40-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband James for five years. We met at a group blind date. At that time, I was struggling to find a partner, so I attended the blind date when a friend invited me. James was the center of attention among the men, engaging in various conversations and making everyone laugh when he spoke. I was attracted to his cheerful personality. Then when we changed seats and ended up next to each other, we discovered that we both really loved coffee, and we decided to go to a cafe together, which led us to meeting one-on-one. That was the beginning of him inviting me out for meals and cafe visits, and we started dating and eventually became a couple. I had so much fun spending time with them, and I became increasingly attracted to him. About a year after we started dating, he proposed to me, and we decided to get married. I want you to be a housewife once we're married. I quit my job at the company I was working for and became a full-time housewife, just as he requested. Since then, I've been working hard on housework to support James. But soon after getting married, I began to regret it as he turned out to be quite the chauvinist. Hey, the ironing on my dress shirt isn't good enough. He said that, but looking at the shirt on the hanger, I honestly couldn't tell what was wrong with it. But since he said to redo it, I hurriedly re-ironed it while he ate breakfast. As I finished and hung it on the hanger, he left his dirty dishes and went to the bathroom. I was quite surprised by his behavior at this point. It was because he was a completely different person from the kind man he was before we got married. Well, I'm off. Have a good day. After seeing my husband off to work, I would always feel completely drained. Being together felt suffocating. Is this okay for newlyweds? I was soon overwhelmed with such anxiety after getting married. But still, I thought I should at least try married life for a year. I might have my own shortcomings as well. With that in mind, I tried to improve what I could. But James' attitude remained the same. You really are a useless wife. Why can't you do what I tell you? He relentlessly berated me like that. Despite it all, I continued with our married life for at least a year. One of the reasons I couldn't bring myself to divorce was my mother-in-law, Emma. Thank you, Sarah, for always helping out. It's such a relief having you here. Oh, don't mention it. Please don't hesitate to ask for anything. Feel free to tell me anything. Emma lived near us, and she had been living alone since her husband passed away. But recently, she had been struggling with housework because of her bad legs. So during the day, I would go to her house and help out as much as I could. From the very beginning of our marriage, she had been very kind to me, treating me like her own daughter. Our only child is James. We really wanted a daughter, too. That's why I'm so happy to have such a wonderful girl like you, Sarah, as my daughter-in-law. Oh, Emma. Having been told such things by her, it was difficult for me to talk to her about James' chauvinistic behavior, and I couldn't bring myself to divorce him, fearing it would make her sad. Amidst all this, something happened that made it even harder for me to divorce. What? Your mom was taken to the hospital? Yeah, so please go see her in the hospital. James told me that, and I rushed to the hospital. When I entered the hospital room, I saw her lying on the bed. Aw, oh, Sarah, you came. Emma! 
Are you alright? I'm sorry for making you worry. She had collapsed from a stroke while shopping and had been taken to the hospital by ambulance. I guess I'm getting old. You never know what might happen. She said this with a worried expression. It was painful for me to see her like that. A few hours later, after finishing work, James arrived at the hospital. Mom, are you okay? Ah, James, I'm sorry for worrying you. I'm fine. No, but you just collapsed out of the blue. Of course I'm worried. After making a worried face, James seemed to have a sudden idea and said this. Oh, I know. When you're discharged, Mom, let's live together. What? That way we can take care of you and if something happens, we can help you right away. I was shocked. Normally, you would first consult with your wife, me in this case, and propose the idea of living together to her after deciding together. But without involving me, he immediately brought up the idea of living together with this mother. It's as if I have no right to voice my opinion. If my mother-in-law agreed, I wouldn't be able to refuse. Well, I am worried about her and I don't mind living together, but I still wanted him to talk to me about it beforehand. Because he suddenly brought it up, it made her uncomfortable. But for Sarah, living with her mother-in-law could be difficult. When she said that, I almost told her, oh no, but James interrupted. No, 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 she doesn't mind at all. In fact, she's terrible at housework, so you should teach her. My mother-in-law was surprised by his remark. James, what are you talking about? Sarah is doing just fine. She's been a great help at my house too. As she defended me, James looked annoyed. Uh, well, as long as both of you are happy. Sarah, you're okay with living together, right? Uh, sure. Then as soon as mom is discharged, we'll move in together. James made the decision to live together in her house rather forcibly. A week later, when my mother-in-law was discharged, James and I terminated our rental apartment lease and moved in with her. Sarah, I look forward to living with you from today on. Same here. She greeted us warmly and our life together began in a peaceful way. I tried my best not to burden her with housework and took the initiative to do it myself, but she insisted on doing simple chores saying that she would become unhealthy if she didn't move. We cooked together and she taught me various recipes. Her cooking was truly delicious and I learned a lot. James seemed satisfied with the clean house and delicious meals. At first, I was unsure about how living together would work, but I started to think that it might be better for me. As a housewife living with just my husband, James was the only person I talked to. But having Emma around gave me someone to talk to during the day, which became a source of mental support for me. She would also step in when James was about to complain about something and take my side. When she scolded him, he would stop complaining, which was truly a blessing. In the blink of an eye, four years passed since we started living together. While I still had my share of complaints about my husband, I got along very well with my mother-in-law, so I didn't think much about divorce. But just when I thought things had finally settled down, James started to show even more unreasonable behavior. You're terrible at managing the household finances. What? You're spending too much on food. No, I think it's an average amount. No, it's too much. That's why I've decided to give you less money. What? I used to give you $370 for food expenses for the three of us, but starting this month, it's $170. What? That's not enough. It's more than enough. You just have to figure it out. 
but we won't be able to get enough nutrition and we won't be able to eat satisfying amounts of food. Figuring that out is the job of a full-time housewife. James suddenly made such an unreasonable demand and he really only gave us $170 a month. There's no way we can cover the food expenses for three people with $170. I also want to make sure my mother-in-law gets nutritious meals too. But James wouldn't listen at all and he didn't give us any more money. So for now, I did my best to make nutritious meals within the $170 budget and I had to be incredibly creative. I bought large quantities of meat at wholesale supermarkets, divided them into smaller portions and froze them. I looked for discount vegetable stores and stocked up and I froze what could be frozen right away. I stopped buying all the snacks we used to buy and switched to cheaper bread. And I didn't forget to be inventive with the menu. I generally bulked up meat dishes with vegetables and tofu. I made sure to prepare soup almost every time so that we could fill our stomachs even with a small number of dishes. I think I'm doing really well. Emma also said, I know that you're trying to save money, but it's amazing that you can still make such delicious meals. And she apologized. I'm sorry that James is saying such outrageous things. Until now, if I warned him, he would stop doing unreasonable things, but this time he won't listen to me no matter what I say. So he wouldn't even listen to you. Although we're managing somehow now, I don't know how long we can keep living like this. Both Emma and I were quite worn out from being at the mercy of James' unreasonableness. And then my husband made another unbelievable remark. It looks like you can live comfortably with just $170. So let's make it $55 starting this month. What? Are you out of your mind? That's impossible! Oh, you haven't changed at all. It's not about whether you can or can't. It's about doing it. If not, I won't even give you $55. No. It's already so difficult and now he wants us to live on half the food budget? I felt like I was going crazy. But he really only gave us $55 a month. Fortunately, he started working more overtime and going out for drinks more often, so it was fine if I just prepared meals for my mother-in-law and myself, even if the menu was modest. But we definitely didn't have enough nutrition, so I went to several supermarkets to find where meat was on sale and bought meals with half-price stickers on. Of course, I relied on the meat from the wholesale supermarket, but I had to buy beef and ground pork at a regular supermarket. Shopping by train was a waste of money, so I rode my bicycle around to stores. I think I really made a tremendous effort. But even in the midst of all that, my husband made another unbelievable remark. I don't get why I have to pay for utilities when I'm hardly ever home. My mom's name is still on the bill, so from now on, I'm not paying for utilities. I really couldn't take it anymore. That's not right. We're living in your mother's house, aren't we? You use the bath and you often fall asleep with the lights on when you come home late at night. If anything, your mom and I use less electricity. I angrily retorted, but my husband predictably got upset. Who do you think is feeding you? Have you forgotten that I'm providing the money for food? It's just $55 that he's giving us. What's with his attitude? That was my honest thought, but if we lost that $55, we would be the ones in trouble. Anyway, I'm not going to pay for utilities anymore. In the end, James forcibly decided on that as well. Emma and I were at our wit's end. Well, I can pay for utilities and such with my pension. Oh, Emma, 
Is there any way to break through this situation? In the midst of this, I came across some information. I thought maybe I could do this too. So I immediately put it into action. About half a year passed since then. Emma and I were somehow getting by with our frugal lifestyle when one day she suddenly fell ill and passed away. I was devastated. I couldn't believe that my mother-in-law who was my emotional support was gone. Even my husband was shocked. I can't believe my mom passed away. The wake began the next day and relatives and friends of Emma attended. But at this wake, James caused an unbelievable incident. It was about the food served at the wake. Everyone was eating and talking while thinking of my mother-in-law. In the midst of that, my husband, perhaps feeling tipsy from the alcohol, suddenly made an unthinkable remark. My mother died because my wife never provided her with decent meals. You're the worst wife, Sarah. Just get out. Don't ever set foot in my house again. James shouted these words in front of all the relatives. I was at a loss for words. We hardly spoke to each other and the time we spent together had decreased. The relationship between my mother-in-law and my husband had always been incompatible. But why would he blame me like this at such an occasion? He's really the worst man to try to corner me mentally even at a time like this. As I clenched my fists in anger, the next moment, all the relatives stood up. They all bowed to me and silently left. I was surprised. During the wake, all the relatives had left. James looked with wide eyes as the relatives left. W why then a certain person spoke to my surprised and flustered husband. James, all the relatives know what you've been doing up to now. What? Who are you? I'm a lawyer who was commissioned by your mother. A lawyer? What do you want? Your mother left a will. I'll read it all out loud as it's written here. The lawyer read Emma's will in front of my husband and me. We were surprised at the contents. My mother-in-law had recorded the fact that my husband only gave us $55 per month for food expenses and didn't pay for utilities. She also recorded that he repeatedly made morally harassing remarks to me and sent these records to the relatives. The relatives, knowing everything, had left in disgust after hearing my husband's words. And my mother-in-law had even more shocking news for me. The will continued, and it mentioned his affair. It seemed that my mother-in-law had hired a private detective to investigate. The lawyer who had received the investigation results from Emma showed them to us. There were photos of James entering a hotel with his mistress looking affectionate. My husband turned pale upon seeing the photos. You want to tell me what this is all about? N no, this, this is, um, it's, it's not what it looks like. What is it then? You were having an affair. Well, that's, um... James was extremely flustered. He desperately tried to make excuses, but there was no escape with so much evidence. It seemed that James was having an affair with a junior at work. The reason he had reduced the money he gave to us was that he wanted to save money to enjoy his time with his mistress even more. Unbelievable. We're getting a divorce. You be paying me compensation. I'll also claim compensation for the moral harassment, not just the affair. No. James cried and apologized, but I absolutely did not want to forgive him. You even made the relatives leave. You're really hopeless. Don't you dare attend the funeral tomorrow. If you're there, we won't be able to properly send off your mom. Why don't you go back to your mistress now and discuss how to pay the compensation? When I said that, my husband left the scene with a frightened look. The next day, knowing that my husband wouldn't be attending, the relatives came to my mother-in-law's funeral feeling relieved. We all said our goodbyes together. 
After that, I divorced my husband and claimed compensation from his mistress. James had to pay a total of $53,000 for moral harassment and the affair, while the mistress had to pay $37,000. The affair became known at their workplace, and the mistress couldn't bear the cold stares and resigned. As long as her parents paid the compensation on her behalf, I didn't care if she quit her job or not. Since my ex-husband had to pay more compensation than his mistress and had no savings, he couldn't quit his job and had to work with a heavy burden on his shoulders. By the way, when my ex-husband started to withhold money unreasonably, I had actually gotten information about a side job and started doing it. Thanks to working diligently, by the time I divorced my ex, I was earning about $900 per month. So now I'm thinking of working part-time while continuing my side job to earn enough income to live on my own. In any case, it was a relief that we were able to hold my mother-in-law's funeral properly and also punish my ex-husband. From now on, I plan to forget about my terrible ex-husband and start a new life. Thank you for watching until the end.